Hey y'all, so last week's video was all about watching out for the warning signs. Today, it's about being still. Even after this guy and I began conversing more frequently, the warning signs became clearer and clearer. But because I wanted to be a good little Christian girl and love everyone, I stuck around. Now for the record, we are supposed to love everyone, but that does not mean that we allow them into our hearts romantically. In hindsight, I'm able to see that my role in the relationship was solely to minister to and encourage him in his purpose. That's it. I was very unclear about where the relationship was heading and because I've heard mixed messages on asking a man, what are we or where is this going? I kept my mouth shut and just hoped that in time he'd make his intentions clear. Sidebar, if you tell him what you want from the relationship and his response is anything but I want the same thing, it's probably a no from him fam. I don't care if he claims the way he's treating you is the same way he treats you if you were in a relationship, so there's no real reason to be official. I don't care if he acts like he can see himself with you or even says things that makes it seem like he wants to be with you. If he hasn't made it clear that he's moving toward a future with you, you need to know that when it comes to your heart, this ain't one of those what's understood doesn't need to be spoken type of things. This is your heart. And the Bible says, above all else, Guard your heart, for out of it flow the wellspring of life. A man will be clear with you when he's really about you, point blank, period. I've seen it. I know what intentional pursuit looks like, okay? Of course, I prayed about the situation. Lord, if this is your will, let X, Y, and Z happen by dot, dot, dot. I mean, some things came to pass and some things did not. Then it happened. While in prayer one day, I believe I heard... He is not your husband. Y'all. When I tell you I was crushed, ooh, I didn't want to believe it because for the first time in over three years, I was attracted to someone who seemed like they were attracted to me as well. It wasn't a one-sided attraction. This was an anomaly. Why would you Why do would this you to, me, to me, God? God? Why, Why would, you would you deprive me? me? You, you promised promise not, not to withhold any, any good thing from me. me. Surely, surely, surely this is a good this thing. Is a good thing. Nevertheless, I cried my little tears, gathered all the courage I could muster, and let him know what was up. I told him straight out, I believe God has said that you are not my husband. He claims that he cried in his hotel room. And even though we FaceTimed shortly afterwards, I didn't see any tears, but I believed him. And his tears made me feel so bad. It made me feel like I'd misheard God. Because I'm still learning how to differentiate between my own thoughts and God's voice, I was not very sure about what I'd heard. Long story short, after talking to him and taking some time to think, or in other words, allowing my emotions and flesh to take over, I decided my insecurities had gotten into my head and had been lying to me. So I moved forward in the situation ship without real clarity. I was being rebellious. I was being impatient. What I should have done was set my little happy hips down somewhere and sought God's face until I had an undeniable answer from him. When unsure about matters of the heart, it's best to be still. And while you're being still, in the event that God does end up giving you the green light to proceed, you may wanna take that time to talk about and solidify boundaries. Next week's post is all about using boundaries to keep your little heart from being trampled on. So until then, stay beautiful.